Hello and welcome back to the channel where in today's video is actually a re-upload from an old channel. Yes, so if you're new here, last year uh, on one of my old channels uh, that was centered around the card game Yu-Gi-Oh! I reviewed the three movies in my old style of reviewing and um, then I decided to re-upload them on here and I'd done the first two. Uh, I'd done the first Yu-Gi-Oh! movie from 2004 as well as the 2010 anniversary movie. And I kept meaning to post this current one but I never got around to it. But here it is. Enjoy the review of Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side of Dimensions that I'd done ages ago. That That's it, like I said, it's in my old review style. <laughs> So the plot takes place a while after the end of the original series, but slightly different as this movie follows the end of the manga, where Seto Kaiba wasn't there to witness the final duel between Atem and Yuki. So this movie picks up as the original gang are about to graduate and move on to further education, or in everyone else's but Teia's case, other adventures. So even though this movie is about the original gang, it really is a Seto Kaiba movie of sorts, as he is still hurt by all his losses to Atem, and since Atem is no longer here, Kaiba sets out to find the resting place of all the Millennium items to bring back Atem, just so he can defeat him in a duel. Of course, this doesn't go unnoticed, as a group of people who worship this new magic that was never mentioned in the original series, called the Plana, that were only activated when Atem returned to the spirit world. Kaiba finds the pieces of the puzzle that and that's when the main villain of this movie, Diva, shows up with his gang to try and stop Kaiba from bringing back the pharaoh, as none of them are aware that as soon as the ten went back into the spirit world, he was gone, and nothing would bring him back. After Diva has stolen two pieces of the puzzle, which one then makes its way back to Yugi, Kaiba then sets up a new tournament, even though it's only just himself and Diva and Yugi, to then show off the new dual disc. But lurking in the shadows is the Millennium Ring, which still holds the spark of Zork, the big bad of the final season. Just like with the other two movies, there isn't much to talk about in terms of character development. Diva is a one-note villain who only wants the Plana around and not to have Atem return, but with it being Shadi's fault for not informing them that after Atem leaves this plane of existence, he can't come back. Yugi, on the other hand, is the only rational thinker, as even though he doesn't have a clue what's going on half of the time, as I said, he isn't the main character, Yugi knows that Atem isn't coming back and keeps trying to tell Kaiba, who won't listen like always. Speaking of Kaiba, as always, he is focused on trying to beat Atem at all costs, even in the end traveling back in time just to duel him, and we don't know if he ever comes back. But how he is acting in this movie is very similar to how he acted in the 2004 movie, being obsessed with wanting to defeat the pharaoh and stopping at nothing to do it. Even after Yugi tells him and shows him that Atem isn't coming back, he refuses to believe it and tries to force Atem to come back. The animation for this movie is by far the best of the three movies, and I can tell they had a bigger budget. Of course that also meant that the Yu-Gi-Oh! series that was airing at the time of this movie's development, which I believe was Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, suffered because of this. But that being said, it is definitely the best of the three in terms of animations, and I couldn't tell if any character was off model, and the slightest redesign of a lot of the characters looks great. Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Sides of Dimensions was released in April 2016 in Japan and worldwide in 2017, and once again, I unfortunately couldn't find any information on this movie's budget, but I did find that it made 7 million USD, with mixed reviews from both fans and critics, but despite that, this is by far the best performing Yu-Gi-Oh! movie out of the three. At the beginning of this movie review, I set out to see if this movie is the definitive of the three Yu-Gi-Oh! movies, excluding the Season Zero movie. And the answer is yes. This is by far the better of the three movies in terms of plot, 
length and animation. All the voice actors sound amazing and like they never left the role, except for the VA for Grandpa Moto. He was the only one who didn't sound like he did in the original series or even in the 2010 movie. I have definitely enjoyed watching and reviewing these movies as they are all good in their own way. Yes, even Bonds Beyond Time has some enjoyment. But with that being said, it's unfortunately time now to end off this review series by saying if you haven't watched any of the Yu-Gi-Oh! movies in a while, I'd say try and find a way to watch them again, as they are worth it. Except Bonds Beyond Time. Fuck that movie. Thank you all for watching as I've reviewed these three Yu-Gi-Oh! movies, and I hope you enjoyed the format of them. If you'd like me to review some of the different arcs in Yu-Gi-Oh!, or some of the memorable, memorable duels, do let me know, as I really did enjoy doing these reviews. But once again, it's time for this review to end, and I hope to see you all next time.